Good morning, YouTube family. First off, I want to say a gigantic thank you. I was literally ear to ear smiles last night, like my cheeks hurt. I was just in awe over all of the absolutely phenomenal comments that you left on my designs yesterday for the Boys and Ice Christmas Market. The comments and the cheering on for our family for this creative adventure that we're taking is just something that just like completely warmed my heart. I just don't even know how to thank you enough. We try to show you guys everything that we're working on and really show you what our family is really all about and the things that we like to do together and things that really are just showing us working towards the dreams and goals and aspirations that we have as individuals as well as together as the four of us in our family. So thank you so much. If you read through yesterday's comment section, like I couldn't even have made up fake comments <laughs> any better than what you guys left me. So not only was my head this big when I woke up this morning from all of your amazing comments, but it was just really reassuring that I was on the right track to just listen to my creativity, to set aside any of that analysis paralysis that I think like 95% of creative people go through when they're preparing for something like this, where you start to overthink everything, you worry, is your stuff gonna be good enough? You know, you just go through that whole literally analysis through your head of all the things and it just becomes a stressful thing and not something to just sit back, make memories and enjoy, which is what we've decided. We were like, we're just gonna go for it. We're gonna do everything that's inspiring to us and just really create. I did walk around with a sketchbook and wrote down any ideas I had along the way and we had nightly conversations with the boys. Okay, what do you wanna build next? What do you wanna do? Really took all of their ideas into consideration which led us to creating our mosey bear and our crabs and our owls and the puffins and just some of the really amazing ideas that we actually prepared were with the boys. And they have their own little creative journeys going on right now. They like to create all the time. Dana especially is always sketching and doing different things. And Chase likes to keep his ideas in his head and then he likes to like bring them to life and ask me how kind of like along the way. So it's really neat to see how they're progressing creatively on their own journeys. So that leads me to you guys totally twisted our arm. Last night, the boys and I discussed if we were going to open up to take any sales for our mosey bear ornament and our owl be home for Christmas pun ornament. Yesterday's comment section was absolutely flooded with comments about wanting to get the mosey bear and the owl. I know there were other ornaments that other people suggested they wanted as well, but those were the two that like really stood out that not only we also really love, but it's something that we just think that you guys were like, no, no, we have to have the mosey bear and the owl. So I am going to add those to the hands that we had on my EliciaEnglish.com today. So if you're watching this video, they should be up now if you're wanting to get one. Shipping will take place on December 1st. Any of the orders that are placed this week will be sent out as soon as our show is done on Saturday, probably sooner than the first, but for sure no later than the 1st of December. So just keep in mind if you are shipping or having something ordered from us, we are in Nova Scotia, Canada. So it does take a couple of weeks sometimes for things to arrive in the United States. It only takes maybe five days uh, if you're here in Canada, but just keep that in mind when you're ordering. We won't be shipping them out until after Saturday. So those things are just gonna be on there if, unless they sell out before then. For, I have a limited number of each of the items that are on there and then Friday night, they're gonna close off. We'll do our show Saturday and then everything will get shipped out first thing that Monday as we get back from the show. Nothing ships over the weekend here. Postals are closed. And then we'll be done for the year. I really noticed from you guys placing orders yesterday for the I love you hand ornaments that you guys were loving that we were putting some of the handmade things on there. So I think it's something that over the Christmas break, I'm going to consider taking some time and actually having some things on there, even just seasonally. And which has led me to thinking, and let me know what you think of this, but I have had an absolute blast the last couple of years creating a number of different Christmas ornaments. And for whatever reason, I think I have an obsession now with making Christmas ornaments. So I'm thinking that maybe next year, maybe in addition to doing the market, the boys and I would work all year long on any of our creative projects that were Christmas ornaments or Christmas decor. And then we would do a complete seasonal launch, say early October. So items could arrive for Christmas or for Christmas decorating and do a massive Christmas market online on myaliciaenglish.com. Let me know what you think of that idea. Right now, I didn't want to add everything. A lot of people were asking like, why don't you just put these on your site? We're creating our content, doing renovations. I have a family here 
And then also we're putting just a few things on there that I know we can manage to have ready to ship out in time. So that's why we've kept it to just those first few designs. So the I Love You Hands, Mosey Bear, and then the I Will Be Home for Christmas. Those are the only three that will be available right now. Again, limited number available. But we did have quite a few questions yesterday in regards to how are we pricing our items? How is the setup gonna go? Are you guys gonna see that and all of that? You are absolutely gonna see from start to finish when the boys and I get up to heading home and then giving you an update on how the show went on Saturday. So the 26th, our show is at 10 a.m. and it goes until one. So we're gonna get up in the morning. I'm gonna film the morning. We're gonna get ready, go to the event. We're gonna film at the event. We're gonna film like our setting up. We're gonna film like how it went at the end. Give you guys a complete update. Let you know how much money we made. Pricing for your items for a craft show. So I have a couple different ways that I look at this. Obviously, time, it takes so much time to create your items. So typically what I would do is I would suggest that, for example, say you can make 10 Christmas ornaments in an hour. That's a lot of Christmas ornaments to make in one hour, but I'm giving you an example of like easy math, simple work. If you wanna be making, say, 20 or $30 an hour, you wanna make sure that you're charging yourself for your time. So think about how much of something you've been able to create in an hour and then add and divide it up into an hourly rate. So if you wanna make $20 an hour and you can make 10 ornaments, you wanna make sure that at least $2 for each of your ornaments is just going into how much time it took you to create that item. Then you need to consider how much money it costs in materials. So for example, say I make an ornament and it costs me 25 cents to make, and then I know that I also need to add a hanger, which is probably another 15 cents. So I'm now at $2.40 just to create the item, and that is including my paint, maybe the scraps that I use, my little hanger, anything that's gonna go into creating that. Are you gonna add a tag? Did the tag cost you money? Are you gonna add any packaging? Are you gonna send them home with it in a bag? You have to think about all those things and add it all in. So right now, for example, I would be at $2.40 for an ornament. Maybe I'm not gonna add a tag, but I'm just gonna have a little sign on the table that says what it is, keeps my cost lower that way. And then I have picked up some recyclable brown bags that I can put things in when they leave. I got 200 for $1.25. So I guess I could divide that up and also include that. But for me, that's just something that I need to put into the cost of my show altogether. And so then if I'm doing $2.40, how much am I wanting to charge that ornament for? So maybe I wanna put it at six or $7, and that way I'm definitely making a profit. But is that enough? Do you want to charge more than that? How big does your profit margin, how big do you want it to be? So there's so many factors. The goal of this market, because we just do this for fun, is to keep our prices as low as we possibly can. We want everyone to be able to go home with something. So you also have to consider what is the goal of you going to the show. And obviously the work and the time that you put into something, the ultimate goal is to create a revenue from what you're doing. But there are other factors. For example, we wanna be part of our local community here since we're newer here. We want to do this together as a tradition for our family. We have other factors that we put into. So my ultimate goal is to go there and create memories and have fun with the boys. And if we make any money along the way, then fantastic this isn't the only income or revenue that we will rely on for our family. So that's very easy to say, well, it doesn't matter how much we make. My point is the ultimate goal isn't to go there and say, okay, we really have to come home with X amount of dollars because then it'll be worth it. And it's, you know, it's, we don't have the stress of like how much money are we going to bring home? But if you are in that situation and you do are doing a Christmas show, cause you're saying, no, I absolutely want to make $500 for a Christmas budget, or I'm saving up for something and I wanna come home with this much money. Maybe you wanna take that into consideration when you're pricing your items. Is there something that you can make that you think that maybe like everyone that walks by is gonna to wanna to grab this quick grab item that's maybe only a dollar or two, a price point that people don't really have to think about that much, and then you'll likely get more sales. Those little dollars add up really quickly, or do you wanna have just a few items that would total the amount of money that you wanna make and you hope that you sell them all for a larger price point. So you really have to look at what your ultimate goal is. I often see online lots of comments in different forums and stuff, especially on Facebook. Oh my gosh, I've made this, how much should I sell it for? But there's really no one else who can tell you how much to sell something for other than you, the person that's created it, you know how much time and money, you know what your ultimate goal is as a creator, what you're trying to make the revenue for, 
or if you need a certain amount of money or something. So you really have to do that equation yourself. But just my best advice is don't sell yourself short. Don't price something under hoping just that like everything will go and be in the negative. Like really truly look at how much it costs you to make something because it's very easy to accumulate a lot of craft supplies, throw them in your studio, grab from them later and be like, oh, this didn't cost me really anything to make. But really truly over a duration of time, it really did cost you money to make. Maybe not at that moment, but you've spent a lot of money on craft supplies, you know, Sometimes you buy craft supplies and you don't use them right away and you put them in there and then you're like, oh, you know, it it's becomes a, a problem to buy so many different supplies to make things, which is why I like to make things out of scrap and why I keep little tiny scrap pieces of lots of different projects, thrifted pieces of material. I pick things up here and there that are like 49 cents for a really neat plaid scarf at the thrift store, something like that, because I can keep track of what I've picked up. I put it in a bin in my art room and I can pick and choose and grab from it for different projects. And sometimes those thrifted or upcycled materials inspire me to create something. For example, you know, we used the thrifted scarf for our Mosey bears. And that was an amazing little custom addition we could put on the bears or just stones at the beach. If you don't have to spend a lot of money to create a really neat inventory to be able to make money. So I hope that what we showed yesterday for our inventory really showed you that we have literally spent under $24 to prepare over 300 items for our craft show using leftover craft paint. I always keep a bin, I have a wire basket of craft paint. We use it for hundreds of projects throughout the year. I think there's probably about $100 or more, maybe $120 worth of those squeeze like craft paints in a bin. And we've literally been using them for, I think, over two years, maybe closer to three years for all of our craft shows. And I've only ever replaced a little bit of white and black. And again, they're only a couple dollars each. And we used all scraps from different projects we were working on. We used some netting from a bug net. We used a vintage scarf. We used a leftover garden jute. I took off little pom-poms off of a thrifted pillowcase. So many different things. You just have to really think out of the box, which I know isn't easy, but I try to look at items and be like, okay, if I'm gonna get rid of this, what elements of this can I keep? And then what elements of this do, uh, do I know I'm never gonna use? So I try to keep just small little things. I try not to hoard too much, but still have a little, little stash I can pull from when I wanna do something like this. So we have spent under $24. I could have spent $12 but I did order some of those round opening balls. So maybe that was a little bit of a frivolous purchase, but I knew that I was going to make 12 ornaments with the 12 balls and then be able to sell them for more than obviously what I paid for them. And they sold out last year. So I feel like it felt like it was the $12 investment that could then generate maybe 60 or $75. So ultimately I could have done this entire show without just that one ornament design that I just knew I had to make for about $12. And the day of our show is $10 to participate. So hopefully this video that we did yesterday showed you that you don't have to spend a lot of money and that you can really just think outside the box to be able to build inventory. Because when you invest a lot of money into doing something like this on a show, then you are stressing over, are you going to be able to recoup your table fees? Are you gonna be able to recoup your materials and your time? It just adds so much stress to it rather than just focusing on creating and having really unique items. Our goal was to have our table really represent our family, be cheery and colorful and all good vibes, show how much love that we put into everything, create our memories where we were there. And then also didn't want to go there and create something that other people had made. We really wanted to focus on having designs that nobody had seen before. Doesn't mean that some things weren't inspired by something else, like for example, the red vintage truck, which I am so over that trend as a few comments mentioned yesterday, but here where we live, it's still pretty trendy and it was sold out last year. So I decided to do the design on that. But I just, I wanted to be able to go there and have a really unique table and have a table that people were drawn to when they go there. So like, okay, we've seen that before. We've seen that before. Oh, I've seen that online or whatever. And then hit our table be like, wow, I've never seen any of these ideas before. And look at how unique the materials are. How do they make these and just see all of the bright colors. And of course we wanted to add that Nova Scotia vibe. So I think generally, when you see the display that we have set up on Saturday, I hope that we've checked off all those boxes and that we hit our goal on what we wanted to accomplish with the show. And then again, if anything, revenues made that day, then fabulous. So for the rest of today, we're just finishing cutting out our last little grouping of shapes that we're gonna be taking. We're working on one more idea that we really wanna get done before we go to the market on Saturday. And then today I also wanna do something that I need your advice on. 
I'm needing to think of a phrase or something that I can put on a sign to display at our actual table that explains how the things at our table are made, like hand painted, scroll saw cut, that kind of idea made with upcycled materials. I just can't put my finger on exactly how I wanna phrase that. So if you can leave me a comment, how do you think I should phrase that? Or if you have any ideas on how I can make that known at our table, because the market is so busy, there's just not an opportunity to tell everyone what you wanna say about your products. And so it's kind of neat, I think, to have some type of an item on our table that allows people to know where all the materials came from, kind of like the idea of how they're created and that we made them together or something like that. So let me know if you have any ideas for that. You guys had so many great ideas yesterday for other ideas on things to make. I just only wish I had more time this week to make them. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to mention was we had lots of comments about asking if we're going to sign the items before we take them to the market. And I wasn't sure if I should sign them beforehand or take something with me to sign if people request it. So I think I'm going to take a thin Sharpie marker with me in case anyone wants something signed. So let me know what you think about that. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that Philip and I and the boys are working on a gigantic dream project behind the scenes that is going to happen later in the spring. We are right now doing everything we can together as a family to create extra revenue to be able to fund this project and make the rest of this into reality over the next couple of months. So any orders that are placed on AliciaEnglish.com, any money that we create from our craft show and some other projects that we have coming up are going to all go towards this dream project. This is something that Philip and I have been dreaming about since we were young children when we knew each other. It's something that we think that you guys will totally understand the journey that we're on in terms of this project as you start to see it come into fruition on the channel. And we're so excited about it. But right now what we're doing is we're working extra hard to create some extra revenue to be able to put towards this. So thank you so much for all the support on ordering anything that you did yesterday on any orders that you placed today and just basically like just cheering our family on. I know we say it in all the videos, but I just don't even know how to tell you guys how thankful we are to have such an amazing support system behind us. And you guys are always cheering us on regardless of what we're doing. And it just makes us so happy, honestly. Like I just don't even, can't even fathom how much love and support is behind us all the time. And I hope that you guys can see that everything that we show you on our end is truly this is just our family and it's just amazing to us that there's so many people that want to follow along and see and watch us dream bigger and bigger and bigger every day. And it's because of your support that we're able to do that. So thank you so much. So I love you. I'm going to go help Philip move more wood into the wood shelter because we still have about a quarter and a half to get in before we have Snowfly next week. Finish getting some more of these things packed up for the show and create my sign that we're going to put on the table to show how things are made. So busy rest of the day today. And I think I got some homemade chocolate chip banana muffins about to go in the oven for the boys before school lunches this week. So we're going to finish off the rest of the day here. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I love you. We all love you. And I will see you on tomorrow's episode.